Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you through the genetic diversity and adaptation section for AQA level biology. Also, at the end of the video, I'll be going through a couple of exam style questions and their mark schemes. And as always, I'll be putting timestamps in the comments section so that you can skip to the relevant sections that you wish to revise from. Right, so let's get started. So what do we mean by genetic diversity? By genetic diversity, we mean the number of different alleles of genes in a population. And by alleles, we mean variations of a gene. For example, we have the eye colour gene and blue eyes is an example of an allele of the eye colour gene. So to put it into context, a species that has high genetic diversity is basically exemplified by a species such as a domesticated dog. So as you can see, we have an image of a Chihuahua and a Great Dane in the image here. And this exemplifies a high genetic diversity because as you can see, they look very different, although they are part of the same species. And an example of a species with low genetic diversity is the koala. Genetic diversity can be advantageous in natural selection as if a species or a population has a high genetic diversity then it's more likely that there will be individuals that are likely to survive extreme environmental conditions. So it enables natural selection to occur. So what is natural selection? Natural selection is a theory deduced by the scientist Charles Darwin, and it leads to the evolution of populations. So how does natural selection work? Well, first, a random mutation, so a change in a DNA-based sequence, can result in new alleles of a gene. In certain environments, a new allele is advantageous. Now, I've only put in certain environments as Quite a lot of the time mutations are harmful, but in the case of natural selection, the mutations are advantageous. So the new alleles result in a feature or a characteristic that is advantageous. This means that the possessor of the new allele is more likely to survive and reproduce as they are more well adapted to their environment. As they are more likely to survive and reproduce, the advantageous allele will be inherited by the offspring. So the offspring will possess the same advantageous allele. This means that over many generations, the new allele increases in frequency in the population. So all in all, the species becomes adapted to the environment very well. And the new advantageous allele often becomes the most common allele in the population. So here is a nice example of natural selection. So in the early days, giraffes had short necks, which is obviously very different of what we know giraffes of today, which is long necks. So a random mutation arose in the early short neck giraffes that caused them to have a long neck. The long necks enabled the giraffe to reach higher trees, so the nutrients on the higher trees were advantageous to their survival. So these giraffes with long necks were more likely to survive and reproduce and this meant that the allele for the long neck was passed on to the offspring. So the frequency of this, of this allele increased rapidly among the populations over many generations. This meant that the long neck allele in, in the giraffe became the most common allele. So adaptations, so for example, the long neck in the giraffe, can be anatomical, physiological or behavioural. Now, I like to use the example of hedgehogs to explain this. So here's an image of a hedgehog. An anatomical adaptation would be the fact that hedgehogs have spikes of the sea to deter predators. A physiological adaptation would be the fact that hedgehogs go into hibernation during the winter months and they slow their metabolic rate down. This means that they can survive the long harsh winters. And a behavioural adaptation would be the fact that 
Hedgehogs sometimes roll up in a ball when they're in danger. So there are actually three methods of natural selection that you need to know about. The first one is directional, and then stabilising and disruptive. The only ones that you need to know for AS, if I just get my pen out, are directional and stabilising. Disruptive comes up in the A2 content. Right, so let's explain directional selection. Directional selection is when selection favours one extreme phenotype. So a newly arisen phenotype, for example, the long neck in the giraffe. This means that the normal distribution curve shifts in the direction of this phenotype. A normal distribution curve is a curve that we use to measure the alle allele frequency of particular traits. So here we have an example of directional selection on a normal distribution curve. So the blue curve here represents the allele frequency before directional selection has taken place. And in the centre we have the most frequent allele. So the most frequent allele with all directional selection is the allele with the average phenotype, so a giraffe with a shorter neck. However, once selection has taken place, the alleles of the extreme phenotype, so the long neck, become higher in frequency. So the curve naturally shifts to the direction that the phenotype lies. So to put it more clearly, on this side of the graph we would have a shorter neck, on this side we have a longer neck. So the allele frequency shifts towards the longer neck, as that is the advantageous phenotype. You, now you need to know how to explain directional selection in the context of antibiotic resistance in bacteria for AQA. So this is what happens. A random mutation creates a resistance allele in the bacterial population. This means that they are resistant to antibiotics who are not killed by them. When these bacteria are exposed to the antibiotic, only those with the resistance alleles will survive and reproduce. So the bacteria that aren't resistant die. This means that the resistance allele frequency increases over the generations, which poses great threat to the human race. So the next type of selection that you need to know about is stabilising selection. Stabilising selection is when the middle trait or the average phenotype has a selective advantage. This means that the variation of traits decreases over generations. So here we have a normal distribution curve representing stabilising selection. So the, again the blue curve represents the allele frequency before selection has occurred. So on either side here, we have the extreme phenotypes. So for example, a very low birth weight and a very high birth weight. Obviously, the average birth weight is advantageous as this leads to or decreases the possibility of health complications. This means that the organisms with this trait are more likely to survive and reproduce, passing the allele onto the offspring so the allele frequency increases. So when the allele frequency of the middle or the average phenotype increases, the curve becomes more narrow. So you need to know how to exemplify this principle through the example of human birth weights. So as I mentioned before, a middle or an average birth weight has a selective advantage as this decreases the possibility of health complications. This means that the babies with the allele for average birth weight are more likely to survive and reproduce to pass the allele to their offspring. Right, so that is it for the content and now I'm going to get on to some exam style questions. So let's read this together. To reduce the damage caused by insect pests, some farmers spray their fields of crop plants with pesticide. Many of these pesticides have been shown to cause environmental damage. BT plants have been genetically modified to produce a toxin that kills insect pests. The use of BT crop plants has led to a reduction in the use of pesticides. 
Scientists have found that some species of insect pests have become resistant to the toxin produced by the Bt crop plants. The figure below shows information about the use of Bt crops and the number of species of insect pests resistant to Bt toxin in one country. So here we have a nice looking graph here. On the x-axis we have the year and on the y-axis on the left here we have the area used to grow crops and on the right here we have number of species of insect pests resistant to Bt toxin. And as you can see by the trend the number of species of insect resistant to the toxin increases over the years. And these great dark grey squares here represent the crops and the bars represent resistant species. So the number of resistant species increases with the use of Bt crops. So let's look at the question. Can you conclude that the insect pests resistant to Bt toxin found in the years 2002 to 2005 were the same insect species? Explain your answer. Right, so the first step to approach this question is that you need to read that it says 2002 to 2005. So you need to look at this area on the graph. So if we see 2002 here, and then if we read along to 2005, so we can see here that the resistant species stays the same. So the question says, can you conclude that the insect pest resistant was the same insect species? But as you can see by the axes, it says number of species resistant, but it doesn't give you the name of the species. So we cannot know if it was the same insect species resistant in these in 2002 to 2005. So this is what I've put. No, because the graph only shows the number of species, not the name of the species. So let's look at the mark scheme. No, because the graph or the bar chart only shows the number of species, not the name of the species. So we would get one mark there. Now note that here it says no and then it says no mark. So you don't get any marks if you just write no with no explanation. As a question asks you to explain your answer. So it's crucial that you do this in order to get the mark. So let's look at the second part of the question. One farmer stated that the increase in the use of Bt crop plants had caused a mutation in one of the insect species and that this mutation had spread to other species of insect. Was he correct? Explain your answer. So as this question asks you to explain, you need to write why something is happening, not just what is happening. So this is what I've written. No, because mutations are random, so only the rate of mutation is, in fact, is affected by the environment. So the use of the crops does not cause the mutation. Mutations are completely random in natural selection. Also, the farmer has stated in the question here that the mutation has spread to other species of insect. This is not possible, as different species cannot produce fertile offspring, so the alleles cannot be passed on. So the mutation cannot spread between species. So I've written, also, the mutation can't be passed from one species to another because different species can't reproduce to produce fertile offspring. I'll talk more about species in my next video about species and taxonomy. So let's look at the mark scheme. No, so you get no mark if you just wrote no. Mutations are spontaneous slash random. Only the rate of mutation is affected by the environment, so you need to refer to what the environment affects to get the second mark. Different species do not interbreed or you can put do not produce fertile offspring, which is what we put so we would get that mark. And the fourth marking point says the mutation slash gene slash allele cannot be passed from one species to another. So we will get all four marks for that question. Here it says ignore references to correlation does not prove causation as the question is asking you about mutations and natural selection. Not about the data in particular. So here is the last question that we're going to go through today. So there was a time lag between the introduction of Bt crops and the appearance of the first insect species that was re resistant to the Bt toxin. So as you can see here, from 1996 to 2002, there were no species of insect that were resistant to the Bt toxin. So there is a time lag. 
So the question says, explain why there was a time lag. As this is an explained question, again, you need to explain why there is a time lag and not just describe what the graph shows in the time lag. So this is what I've suggested. There were only a few insects with the favourable allele initially, as when the mutation first arises, the um, organism with that favourable allele has not reproduced yet. So there were only a few insects with the favourable allele initially, as it takes a long time for the favourable allele to spread over generations. Also, I've written, the individuals with this allele are more likely to survive and reproduce, so pass on the allele to more offspring. And also, it takes many generations to become the most common allele, as I have said already. Right, so let's look at the mark scheme. So the first marking point says, initially, one or a few insects will have the favourable mutation or the allele. The second marking point says, individuals with the favourable mutation slash allele will have more offspring, which we wrote. Now here it says favourable in brackets, so you don't need to put the word favourable to get the mark. And the third marking point says takes many generations for the favourable mutation slash allele to become the most common allele. And then you can also put of this gene but that is not essential. So we'll get all three marks for that question. May I note also that you need to refer to the process of natural selection as well in the, your answer. Right, so that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.